Nazi rocket scientist Werner von Braun, who built German rockets and dropped them on London, was also put on the new CIA payroll. Von Braun and his team of Nazi rocketeers were sent to Huntsville, Alabama. Hollywood honored Von Braun as a collaborator on an American sci-fi movie and series of Walt Disney shows. you back to 1958, 59, and I'm suddenly required to work with a Nazi. I grew up in World War II. Now, you couldn't expect me to suddenly have great love for somebody that came out of Peter Mundy and was firing rockets at the people in England and blowing them up, and furthermore had been in Peter Mundy where he had slave labor, etc. So how am I supposed to suddenly like that, that guy? The international banksters and the men who served them had won the American, Russian, and British versions of Monopoly by seizing control of the Bank of England and the U.S. Federal Reserve, and by wiping out the Russian czars. But the ultimate goal of the banksters was to win the world game. Their devious game plan was to divide the world into two warring power blocks, the Western capitalist bloc led by the United States and the Eastern Communist Bloc, led by Russia. Their next move was to transfer atomic weapons secrets to their Russian Communist Bloc through Victor Rothschild, who is the ringleader in Britain's biggest communist spy scandal, and through J. Robert Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project's leading atomic scientist. In September 1949, the Soviet Union exploded its first A-bomb. America's monopoly on atomic weapons ended after only four years. Now, both superpowers had the means to destroy the world. The next step was to stage a phony arms race and cold war between their first world capitalist bloc and second world communist bloc. Like sports teams, the US and Russian superpowers needed recruits for their war games. So they forced new third world members of the United Nations to choose sides. American Secretary of State John Foster Dulles warned third world countries that you're either with us or you're against us. Korea and Vietnam were torn up like rags into half communist, half capitalist countries and became the playing field for phony war games between the bankster superpowers. Marilyn Monroe in Korea, America's great sex symbol, innocent and alluring, caught in the blood and mud of the Korean War. To the battle-weary soldiers who gazed at her, she must have looked like an angel sent from heaven to ease the pain of fighting a godforsaken war in a far-off land. It's difficult and dangerous. But though generally outnumbered, American sabers and British meteors are out fighting the MIGs. The lives of 4 million Korean civilians and 33,000 American soldiers were sacrificed in the 1950 Korean War, bringing the banksters another step closer to world domination. Like Korea, Vietnam was split into North and South Vietnam and became their next target. In 1954, the U.S. military dropped millions of tons of bombs on undefended Vietnamese civilians and turned their lush green countryside into blood-red killing fields. It was a butcherous campaign of terror, rape, torture, lies and cover-ups. The U.S. military, who had already tested two radioactive atomic weapons of mass destruction on the people of Japan, decided to test their chemical weapons of mass destruction on the people of Vietnam. Seventy million liters of chemical weapons of mass destruction 
were sprayed over the Vietnamese people, their water, and their countryside. The most lethal was Agent Orange, which defoliated, killed, and contaminated everything in its path like a radioactive atomic bomb. To this day, survivors suffer related cancers, genetic deformities, and permanent environmental damage. Many U.S. servicemen publicly confessed to their crimes and suffered haunting flashbacks. of massive U.S. war protests, President Nixon increased America's military presence in Vietnam to half a million soldiers by 1969. It was Nobel Peace Prize winner Henry Kissinger who convinced Nixon to expand the Vietnam War to the neighboring countries of Cambodia and Laos, causing the mass murder of another one million innocent people and their families. On May 4, 1970, America got a wake-up call. Six peaceful anti-war student demonstrators from Kent State and Jackson State Universities were shot dead by U.S. armed guards while dozens of others were wounded. The message came through loud and clear. The power of the U.S. military could turn its weapons on its own citizens. In 1947, the United States played host to an international conference at Bretton Woods to put an end to world poverty and starvation caused by World War II. The idea was to give humanitarian loans to needy nations by creating a World Bank and an International Monetary Fund. But who would be put in charge of these billion-dollar megaloans? Who else but the U.S. Federal Reserve bankster families? U.S. Federal Reserve banksters in charge of humanitarian loans is like putting pedophiles in charge of daycare centers. Instead of helping the poor, the banksters turned the World Bank and International Monetary Fund into international pawn shops and robbed the poor. Just to qualify for a loan, desperate nations were forced to pawn their mines, forests, railways, power companies, and water systems and agree to over 100 loan conditions at loan shark interest rates. To pay off the loans, they were forced to ignore laws that protected their environment, to lower wages, and to cut back on their education and on their health care. They were also forced to privatize and sell off their resources to crooked corporations like Enron. Lord Wakeham, the director of N.M. Rothschild & Sons, was on the audit committee of Enron and cooked the books and sucked billions from pension funds and investors before declaring bankruptcy. When poor nations were unable to pay their loans, they were given new loans to pay off the old loans. But these so-called bailout loans weren't about bailing out the poor. They were about bailing out and lining the pockets of loan underwriters like Citigroup and America's most notorious crooks and banksters. As desperately poor nations got more desperately poor, the filthy rich banksters got filthier rich 
and God help anybody who got in their way. Davison Butto, senior economist for the International Monetary Fund, resigned to, quote, wash my hands of the blood of millions of poor and starving people. When President John F. Kennedy tried to take back America by reviving U.S. government printed money, his head was blown off in a Dallas motorcade. When his son planned to expose the ugly truth about his father's assassination, his small plane plunged into the ocean, killing all on board. <laughs> 